Welcome, everybody, to episode 22 of the Ed Listen podcast uh, with your host, Bjorn Barrent. Uh, it's been, this is being recorded April 11th, uh, 2013. And this is a slide speech with uh, John Graves. Hey, John. Hi, how's it going? Not too bad. Where, you, where, you, uh, where do you live? Where are you housed right now? I'm speaking to you from the future. It's actually April 12th, Friday morning in Auckland, New Zealand. Man, it's surprising. The more I do this podcast, the more the time zones and the way things work here. <laughs> we are one small planet. Oh, it is. Especially now. Uh, the, okay. the news uh, from around the world is uh, that... Uh, we are all connected together, and and uh, when we can start sharing, uh, you know, it's just an amazing opportunity. Oh, it is, and you have like one of the best products that I've seen for sharing. So I want, I'm happy to have you on for today. Thanks. Uh, before we get to that, I want to kind of plug a few things that are going on. Uh, if you are local, uh, or if you want to take a trip up to Vermont, uh, I have. It will actually technically be four courses, one's just within a school, but I'm teaching three different courses uh, this summer. Uh, the first one is going to be at a personalized learning institute, and that's going to be July 8th through the 12th. It's going to be hosted at Castle and State College here in Vermont. Uh, it's going to be a bunch of different workshops. I'm going to be doing stuff on e-portfolios. I'm going to be plugging G-Class folders. I'm uh, going to do a hangout with Google+. Plus. So I'm going to be talking about Google Plus and that platform, and uh, building classroom websites. So those are the workshops I'll be doing at that institute. Uh, we have a Google Tools for Schools. Uh, this is a, actually almost turning into a Vermont franchise. Uh, there are going to be one Google Tools for School in each region of the state. Uh, I'm co-presenting the one in the southern region uh, in Chester, Vermont. And that's happening June 5th, actually it's happening July 27th, 22nd through the 26th. Uh, and that one is going to be kind of cool. You actually get a free Chromebook out of that one. So I highly encourage the uh, Google Tools for Schools. And the one that I'm hosting all by my, own, all by my lonesome is going to be uh, Flippin' Tools, uh, which is happening August 12th through 16th uh, at Mill River Union High School here in Clarendon, Vermont. And again, all these three are going to be uh, either, well, the first two, you can either take it without graduate credits or with graduate cred credits. Uh, Flipping Tools is going to be with graduate credits. So those are the three things. And if you go to edlisten.com, right in the top little introduction, you'll see the 2013 summer courses I'm teaching. Uh, so I encourage everybody to check that out. Uh, if you also, while you're there, uh, probably under the post for this podcast, uh, you'll see that I grab my uh, two-year-old daughter saying "Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star" uh -huh. <laughs> on my podcasting equipment. It's I, I say it's the best use of my podcasting equipment yet. No offense, John, but <laughs> no, <laughs> you said four courses. Is one of those you're doing twice? Uh, no, I'm actually teaching another. Uh, we're doing a technology show and share at one of the schools I'm working for, but we're keeping it closed just to just to the school. All right, because uh, we're trying to keep it focused to the tools that that school has and um, every, making it all work. But that's actually going to turn into a really cool. That's like the hodgepodge. We're going to have like a mobile learning day. We're going to have a, a personal learning network day, and you know, five different types of learning and technology integration all kind of combined into one class. It's one I think if it works, we're definitely going to open up to, you know, finding a way either we can do it online or. Uh, open it up to the rest of the teachers, but I guess for right now we're trying to keep it condensed to just our district. Yeah, the really great thing about these uh, in-person uh, experiences is that you can kind of get oriented to the the content, and then there's so much more that you can do. You know, once you kind of get back home and you you've got some time to digest it, and you can go online and 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 really dig in and start you know copying some of the the templates and. Uh, uh, but it, having that first sort of introduction to it in person, I think, is really helpful. Yeah, 
It's funny, I break up all my professional development into three categories. Um, exposure, time to play, and time to implement. Um, and I even try and give a little bit of that within the day structure. I try and give a little bit of that throughout the whole course. Um, and, you know, maybe a follow-up or something else after you get to implement it. But without those three things, usually technology doesn't actually get into the classroom. They make it learned about, but it doesn't necessarily... I, I guess what I'm saying is I think so much professional development is built around the um, exposure of it that... A lot of teachers lose the time to play and time to implement. So that's yep. something I try and bring to the courses I teach. So, good point. Good okay. design. Okay. Yeah. Um, so slide speech. Uh, this is a really, really cool app. And I have to say, there has been a tool that Microsoft came out with. It's called Photo Story. And we've been looking for a web-based application that you know, kind of is an alternative to it. You don't have exactly the same features, but oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm going to let you, before we get into what slide speech is, uh, tell me about yourself. Well, you know, I've got a funny kind of story. I, I was a, a quant on Wall Street in, in uh, 2008, you know, and the f global financial crisis hit, and uh, I got downsized out of my my, my job, uh, you know, working in Times Square, and uh, and decided, well, hmm, my mother went back and got a PhD at age 50. Maybe I should do the same thing. So I'm a, I'm a returning PhD student studying computer science in Auckland, New Zealand. And why Auckland, New Zealand? Well, once you're on the internet, New Jersey, New Zealand, you know, same difference. And, and so I just picked a nice place to come, and uh, you know, I had a little bit of a, a currency. Uh, uh, working in my favor, so it's, it's a little cheaper to go to school down here too. And uh, I've been having a great time and learning all about um, Wikipedia. And really, uh, my my PhD research has been into how do we make another thing like Wikipedia that addresses uh, learning needs, not just uh, providing reference materials. And uh, uh, two and a half years into that project, um, a local uh, cardiologist said, "You know, John." You've come across some really interesting stuff here. What do we? What do you think about we commercialize this? And I'll, I'll write that you know, proverbial hundred hundred thousand dollar check. And so I, a year ago, I started a business. And uh, so I, I haven't finished my PhD yet. I'm still working on, on the final drafts here this this month. But uh, uh, I, I'm a, a, an entrepreneur and a and a graduate student. Hey, I just finished up my uh, master's last. Um last June and my wife's finishing up her second degree right now just because well her first one was has absolutely no relation to what she's doing currently yeah but it all works out we're all lifelong learners now and th and this is again why I, I think developing an educational technology product today is, is sort of the thing to do because uh, our relationship with this uh, fast, fast developing, you know, expanding sphere of human knowledge it is going to be lifelong. And uh, having more and more tools that make it sort of easy for us to uh, engage with all of that uh, it, it, on, on our own time, uh, it's a very different kind of learning model than we're used to. So there, there are going to be, I think, transformations on the same scale as, as going from, you know, transport with trains to transport with cars. Uh, we have to build out a whole kind of infrastructure to make this, this possible, but personalized lifelong learning is, is really, I think, where we're headed. Yeah, I'm going to have to put that in the show notes and just kind of coin that term. Yeah, my big thing is never stop learning. Yep. So per personalized lifelong learning. Okay. And that's a really cool concept because I guess one of the other things that are that is happening is people ten years ago, actually it's still happening now, you know, it's just been if you're gonna do a presentation, you just do it in PowerPoint. If you're gonna write a document, you have to do it in Word. Um and that model is changing. And like I said, it's I love the personalized aspect of it because it's about using the right tool for the right job. 
Yep. And so there's plenty of tools out there. Um, you have to be exposed to the right to what is out there, so you know what you can use. Um, some taste is there's a there's one that I use quite a bit for presentation. It's called Prezi. Um, oh, I love Prezi. Yeah, I know for layout and things like that. And this is going to be a great transition into um, slide speech. Really fills another gap, and it's almost a gap I didn't necessarily know I needed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've been using what I normally been doing it with my presentations is I'll queue up the presentation and I'll open up a screen share software and I'll record it that way. Yep. Uh, which is decent. I mean, I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with that method of doing it. But I just built my first slide speech today, and you guys really got it right. I like how it works. Oh, thanks. All right, let me, let me tell you there's some some real problems with the screen share approach. And because I went down that route too. I thought, "Oh, you know, I really want to be able to share these presentations." But, you know, yes, now you're I consider, you know, a, a broadcasting professional at this point. You've got all the right audio equipment and, you know, you you've sort of taught yourself how not to into the microphone and whatever, so that it, the, the quality of the recordings actually comes out, you know, very high quality. For most people, they're literally just slapping on a headset for the first time, and as soon as they start recording themselves and then listening to themselves, you realize, oh gosh, you know, there's a big difference between, you know, what I get when I, you know, I'm talking to my family on Skype and what I get when I'm thinking this is something I'm actually going to put out as my work product to the world. And uh, the time it takes to go back and, and edit out that stuff and clean out that stuff, or you know the investment that you need to make to actually get to this level of sound quality that, you know, you feel comfortable sharing it, it it's just a, 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 a the combination of, of editing and, and uh, audio quality expense and time, uh, what we have discovered with slide speech is you can you can just completely shortcut all that and then you get a bunch of, of very interesting side benefits. So what, what did you find in terms of your experience? How long did it take you to make your first one? Um, really not that long. I mean, to be honest, my hardest part about this whole thing is that I've lived in the Google Apps world for so long right. uh, was getting a PowerPoint open. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> the 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 Google Apps tools uh, can be used uh, to to actually make your your presentation, so you never actually have to have PowerPoint uh, on your system to to use slide speech. In fact, you can use it from the mo the mobile apps uh, to make one slide presentations now. Uh, you know, just right from your phone, which I don't know if you had a chance to play with that. Um, maybe we should back up a little bit and give uh, a, sort of a rough picture of what slide speech is. And, and what it can do for people. Uh, yeah, I was kind of going there too. Okay, good. To listen to, we got excited about the product and <laughs> <laughs> moving ahead. So uh, the the basic concept is uh, it's as simple. I mean, you can you can put the how to instructions into a Twitter message. You you put speaker notes in the sl on the slides, and you upload it to Slide Speech, and then the presentation talks. It says whatever you typed into your speaker notes. Now you think, well, gosh, that's a computer voice. Well, it turns out the computer voices have gotten to be almost indistinguishable from human voices. Now, they make mistakes, but as soon as you can type and edit the, the text that you're sending to the, the, the text-to-speech engine, you can clean those mistakes up in just a matter of a minute. So, the, a typical first time experience with slide speech is you make a one slider and it takes five minutes and and you get that immediate oh I can actually do this and it's it, I'm already using all the, the the presentation tools everything about it is familiar to me all I'm adding is that one step of I'm gonna submit this thing to slide speech and then what I've created is going to deliver itself and the power of that is really remarkable because it now it becomes a persistent self-delivering presentation that anyone anywhere on the planet can access because what we've done is it plays not only on the web in a, in a HTML5 wrapped you know, slideshow 
the talking slideshow presentation, but it can also be accessed on any of the mobile platforms. So we have a, a, an Android app, a, an iPhone, iPad app, and a Windows phone app. And so literally you hit the, the period on the last sentence on the last slide, send it to slide speech, go, and suddenly you're reaching 2 billion people. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. We've got a couple of other special aspects of this thing because remember what you're doing is typing. And typing means you're creating text that Google can search. So not only have you created something that's available anywhere on the planet, but anybody typing in a Google search is going to be able to search full text, every word on every slide of every presentation you make. And so those, the, the same way Wikipedia is, you, you kind of, you look up something and you find a Wikipedia article and then you can read whatever you want to learn about. With, with slide speech, you can create stuff that people can look it up and watch. And uh, I, just this week, I've been r realizing you know, some of the, the, the synergies you can get from this uh, because we can embed it in, in your blog. We can put uh, out a video version if you want to add it into your, your YouTube channel. Uh, we can uh, even podcast it you know, because just the audio, as we're you know, exchanging uh, pleasantries here, uh, shows you know, people can, can just listen. And, uh, and the text-to-speech voices just keep getting better and better. Uh, I only have a license at the moment from a company called Sarah Proc in Scotland who said to academics, uh, look, we want to see you know, text-to-speech made, put to use in educational settings, uh, so we'll, we'll let you use it for free. And, and so you can do a, a male, a female, and then a one male German voice on, on the current uh, uh, slide speech uh, service at, at slidespeech.com uh, and the uh, the range of other voices that are actually available out there is phenomenal I mean you can you can pick pick any language you want you can pick uh, any accent you want so I, I love to go on to the uh, there's a company called loquendo uh, recently acquired by nuance the people who have all the dragon dictate uh, speech to text or voice recognition technology as well yep. so you it's, it's it's we're right on the horizon of your being able to talk to your computer having it transcribe everything you say and then those same words can be spoken oh wait translated and then spoken in another language so imagine the power of creating that you know that when you're you're addressing that audience of two billion people you know uh, many of them will speak English uh, some of them could actually hear your presentation delivered in their native language. Okay, so am I hearing? So am I hearing you right that yeah. in addition to everything that I've played with today, um, I have some friends who like are in Sweden, and I have friends in German, but I don't speak German. They'll be able to listen to my slide or watch my slide speech in their native language. That's coming. Now, now, let me just tell you what, what you can do right this minute, which is literally to write out your presentation and send it off to one of these translation services, like One Hour Translation or Straker Translations, and what they'll send you back, and you have, you have to pay for that translation, but it's you know, typically like less than 50 bucks, is the completely human-translated German version of your presentation, which you then pass through slide speech, and now you've got your presentation in English and your presentation in German. Nice. Now, I want to go through the process of what I did here for creating my first slide speech Great. slide. Um, I, you know, I got to my computer, I opened up that archaic program, which happens to be 2010 version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of, uh, I know, uh, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint. Because at the yep. moment, it's only PowerPoint or um, LibreOffice. And I'm still. Assuming... Oh, no. We, we support PDF files or even just image files. Okay. So you got even more in there. So PDF yep. or image files. I think yep. I was just going by what it was telling me. So, hmm. um, which, again, I could easily have done in, um, you know, I guess I could have easily done on uh, Google's presentator and just exported as a you know, PowerPoint. Or PDF, exactly. Or PDF. Yep. Um, so it picks up the actual show notes in the PDF file? Okay, the, the, uh, if you send a PDF up, 
uh, it will recognize uh, comments. So the, the the very latest version of of uh, PowerPoint uh, that I have, you can export to a PDF, and the speaker notes become comments on the on the pages, and and our system will read those. But really, all you need is to get the images up there because the the service itself has has the editing for the the voiceover script. The the, the speaker notes can be added and modified on the on the website, and this is another wonderful aspect of this. As soon as we make this podcast recording today, it's fixed. It's frozen. But a slide speech presentation, even after you've published it and sent the link out to people, it's just like a wiki page. You can go and change that text on the web, and your updated version will be what the next person hears. Nice. Now, yeah. finishing the process, so we, we created our presentation or we created our images and however else and I went to the slide speech website and you log in and I got four little options one is create slides my slides I think it's supposed to be favorites probably in a slightly different language <laughs> yes. <Favorites. laughs> um, so you basically go to create slides and it gives you this choose the file to upload you upload the file you choose what the person that you want to um, have it as you have a really nice screenshot of the speaker notes and where to add the notes and you click publish and momentarily as long as it as long as it takes for me to upload it all of a sudden I had all my slides that I created and each one has its own little text box where you can modify the text that is being spoken to you have the ability to you know tweak the text like I found out, um, one of the tricks that I learned to make it sound a little bit better in mind was uh, Ed Listen on my website. If I put a space between Ed and Listen.com, precisely, yep, it sounded a lot better than if I put those two together. Right. Um, and you know, there's a couple of little thing, a couple of little tricks I figured out. Like if you keep it capitalized, it'll actually spell it for you, spell yep. the word for you, and. Uh, so it had a lot of little tweaks that you could put in there after you've uploaded to make it sound even better um, than the robotic sound that it had. Uh, and then going through, I'm a big audio guy. I like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so on the exit slide where I was kind of saying, hey, thank you, check out my podcast, you know, I recorded that myself and uploaded the MP3 and added that. So it had both in there which was really really cool and the other feature I wanted I didn't get to play with too much but I want you to talk about was the ending questions right so uh, what we realized early on uh, as I was prototyping this whole thing in uh, in Python uh, was that what we really wanted to get to wasn't a presentation tool what we wanted to get to was a pedagogically significant interaction and and the distilling that down to its essence uh, I think there's a learnable moment when you've you've given a student a, a, a challenge question and they have multiple uh, choices that they can make and how they're going to respond to that question and you want each of those responses to be more than just a yes or no you you want them to say I'm asking this question almost as a formative assessment rather than as a um, you know a test at the end of the material so when they give their answer you can elaborate verbally on why that's correct or why that's wrong and if it is wrong and they need some remedial help they need that you know their the the reason why they made their mistake you know kind of explained uh, the the interactivity allows you to speak that response to their response and link in to an appropriate next piece of uh, content. So the interactivity at the end of the slide speech presentation at the moment is just this one slide that you can create, which is a question with multiple choice answers where selecting one of the multiple choice answers 
speaks and links. And then there's a, a really very interesting aspect of that is if the link goes to another website, the voiceover continues to speak even as that other website opens up. So any re resource anywhere on the internet that you want to expose to a student, you can say, I'm going to have a, a slide speech interactive that when they click on this thing, it's going to open up and the voiceover that I've just created is going to talk while that page is displayed. So it's going to explain you know, what they're seeing while that screen is live on their browser and then they can immediately start interacting with it with that understanding and explanation that that site doesn't have. You know, it doesn't have a, a way of talking itself, but you can use slide speech to talk about it. You I follow see. that? Yeah. Um, I'm following that and if I'm does it also work like if I can I type in what's going to be said in that one or do I have to record that? Uh, everything in the interactivity is is typed uh, and uh, just just like the the presentation you know speaker notes themselves so again if it doesn't work the first time or it doesn't come out the way you want you just go back in and do a little more text editing or uh, you know change the arrangement of the the answers or you know uh, I, I frequently find you know I I'm I'm finishing up a presentation and I, I know I wanted to do a couple of things I send it off and as soon as I've I've published it I think Oh, you know, it'd also be good if it could also link to some other thing. I just go back in, re-edit the interactivity, add in another choice. Oh, and, man. And it, yeah, it's fabulous. It really now, is. I'm looking at this interactivity because one of the other things that I saw that was really cool was that you could take, uh, it almost looks like you could go to a different slide share, slide share presentation uh, depending on your answer. Absolutely. That's exactly what I was getting at. The links can be to any external website. You know, you could go right to Google uh, or, or go to your Google community or go to, you know, any other web resource that you want to offer to your students. But you can also keep the thing going as one slide speech unit linked to another. And, and consequently, you can build a whole uh, structure of inter uh, interconnected slide speech presentations which work effectively just like a whole bunch of interconnected web pages except now they're talking you through different things and then oh those can be mixed and matched so really the, the, the tremendously exciting opportunity here is for this whole thing to become a wiki like community resource uh, one of the settings as you upload your, your presentation is, am I going to make this thing publicly editable? So, because it is living in the cloud, so all I need to do is tick that box, and now, well, if you had done it on the presentation you did a minute ago, I could look it up, and or you could give me the link, and I could make changes in your presentation. And, I mean, that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm a big Google fan, is just that collaborate, collaboration. Um, yep. in there yep. so it's an amazing tool and I don't think and photo story ever did anything like that <laughs> no it doesn't and what I was going I was I had a little you know a little mind lapse as to what I was talking about but I'm looking at this in terms of differentiated instruction yep. uh, I'm looking at this in terms of flipped education I mean this is a huge flipped education tool where Absolutely. the teacher can put post it out there um, and can explain these different things, have the ending assessment, and based on the student's choice of that assessment, bring them to another section. Yep. Uh, I mean, that is a going further or, you know, play again. There's a lot in that. I just, it, I'm going crazy with the ideas, and this is definitely going to be included in my um, flipped ed, you know, flipping tools. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, no, it has. It really has the same power of, of of linking as the as the internet itself, because that's that ultimately is the way the 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 links are are work from a, a technical standpoint. You need to get those web addresses, and and uh, so one of the key skills, and and I don't know when you teach this in your classes, uh, is you know how do I go up to the address bar of my browser and grab all, everything that's in there and hit control C you know if people don't know how to do that they aren't going to be able to pass along this uh, 
link and and, the, and make the connection for for their students. Are you familiar with the term stigmergy? No, that one's a new one to me. All right, this is a really great concept. It comes from the world of biology, uh, where uh, you know, like, how do termites, who are all you know, essentially little dumb creatures, manage to build these great big termite mounds and stuff? Uh, and or how do ants figure out you know where the food is and all go you know trailing off in the right direction to go and 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 get that food? It's because each of the ants or each of the termites leaves a little signal about where they went and what you know that this is the good place to go and and so when there's there's work being done more work gets done in that direction basically so stigmergy is a stigma uh, is a sign and mergy is work so it's a sign to do work stigmergy and the the, the neat thing about uh, the way slide speech works is you build these these pathways towards knowledge and understanding that then other people can build on and and so it's it's the same kind of a creative knowledge creation that made you know wikipedia so successful is they they started with newpedia and had you know 12 articles at the end of a year because you know all the experts had to you know make sure everything was good and then suddenly they they open this up for crowdsourcing and then Oh my gosh! They had a hundred thousand articles in in twelve months because everybody could expand the the interconnected collection of stuff in every direction that they they needed to. And, and when when you start doing that with a a, a talking you know presentations, um, you 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 wind up building a system because again it's completely Google searchable that anybody can search for anything they want to learn about it'll land them effectively in the middle of all of this interconnected stuff and, and then they can just start following the pathways that people have have established that are the highest quality most informative and appropriate learning experiences for them because of the way of the choices they make at the at each you know step of that interactivity and ha oh, you know, you think we can do this today, a and uh, it's uh, just a, a matter of our all, you know, putting in our own little, you know, presentations. You know, wh what is it that you know about that that you can share, uh, and because that will then become something that gets linked in and connected up with with everything that everybody else is doing. Uh, have you ever heard of um, a guy named Peter Diamandis and a book called Abundance? Nope, you got me on that one too. Okay, uh, this is a really neat guy. Uh, he's uh, uh, one of the founders of a thing called Singularity University, in, in, uh, right next to the, the Googleplex there in, um, in Mountain View, uh, California. Okay. And, and, uh, and his book, Abundance, is, is really about the way uh, technology is uh, accelerating and ultimately uh, making it possible for us to have much, much more of everything. He, the, he, he tells the story uh, in the book about how at one time the most precious metal on the planet was aluminum until we gained the knowledge of how to, you know, use electricity, I guess it is, to, to extract aluminum ore. And now, you know, you know, we you know, throw away aluminum because it's so cheap, and uh, uh, that that knowledge is is advancing very quickly, and, and it's going to make many other things that to us today are very expensive and difficult to access, just unbelievably you know sort of throw away cheap, and and one of the the areas he thinks this this technology is is going to address and soon is is education. Uh, if you look at the budget of Wikipedia. It's forty million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Now uh, that seems, I don't know, a big number. The the, the the Department of Education of the United States alone has a sixty-eight billion dollar annual budget. So so the the whole cost to run Wikipedia is it's not you know a, a thousandth. 
you can't even see it if you try and graph the two numbers on, on, a, on a bar graph at the same time. And yet, Wikipedia is serving a, a population of 480 million people every month, which is more than the entire population of the United States, 330 million. So you're getting this a million-fold reduction in the the cost and the reach of, of educational content when it's on when it's in this digital form. No, I have it's to. Just agree. This, it's astounding. <laughs> and so I, I, you start asking yourself, well, well, why would I want to spend my time uh, focused on on trying to to create? Uh, some learning material for a class of 30 students when it, I could turn around and share that same learning material with a planet of 7 billion. And, and, and you, you think uh, I'm, you know, talking, you know, out of the box here, but well, Sebastian Thrun, you know, was the guy who uh, did exactly that with his, uh, his uh, artificial intelligence course at Stanford. And you know he he'd had a classroom of you know 200 Stanford students, but when he turned around to the internet, you know uh, what was it 160,000 people signed up, and uh, you know some 20,000 students finished his course, and then he he turned the whole thing into Udacity. Uh, so it's it's not just me; it's, it's you know Stanford University and you know MIT with edX and Coursera, you know all the the big players in education are realizing, ah. Oh, we can we can use these these online learning tools to share our course materials around the planet as well. Uh, but this can reach with a tool like SideSpeech right down into you know your your uh, your high schools and your your secondary schools and uh, the I don't know about the primary kids yet, but you know I, I've seen some. Uh, uh, amazing uh, examples of where they're they're giving iPads to. Uh, you know, kindergartners, and uh, uh, this is this is an entirely new world that, that this this generation is going to be, uh, you know, learning through technology right from the, from the very start. Yeah, I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old, and you know, my six-year-old has my old smartphone, and that's her little tablet. Oh, neat! <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's really cool, and I'm, I got a little distracted by searching in your sorry. Uh, by searching the uh, slides that are available by the catalog uh -huh. right now, I mean I'm I just hit music in there and I have a what looks like a really good slide on Creative Commons. Great. Yep. So yep. It, I mean this is where the repository is big in of itself within the school. And uh, how long have you got? How long have you been out? The 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 investor supported me a year ago, and the the site launched around July. We had a a bunch of interest around this um, uh, the Moodle Moot virtual conference. Uh, Nellie Deutsch, I don't know if you've uh, are acquainted with her and her her whole her program, which uh, they they typically are based off of the Wiz IQ platform. Okay, does yeah. a bunch of webinars. Anyway, she used slide speech to sort of welcome everybody to to this virtual conference, uh, and and that was our our first big spike in in traffic uh, last year. But at the moment, uh, just to give you the numbers, we're, we've got about twelve hundred people that have uh, contributed, uh, and there's uh, well over two thousand presentations in the system already. Uh, and uh, but as, as I see it, we're we're just getting started, and uh, the uh, the big jump is going to be moving this whole thing onto a, a service like Amazon Web Services, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where uh, anyone, you know, vast numbers of people could access it, and it wouldn't get you know bogged down. It, this this has really been a a, a beta. Uh, platform for us at, at, at this stage, but it, it really does work, and it works on the mobile phones too. Which it, it, until you do that, you, you don't really have the aha moment. But as soon as you've you've submitted a slide speech presentation, and then you turn to your Android phone with the uh, the slide speech app on it, and that same presentation you just watched on you know your your desktop or laptop is also playing on that mobile device, you go wait a minute. You know that, that phone could be anywhere on the planet, and 
uh, it's it's like you've got a, a, a broadcasting capability from you know Vermont to to help people in you know Africa or you name it you know uh, uh, so I'm I'm working actively with a guy in, in Tanzania right now to get him going making you know sort of locally appropriate presentations that he can distribute around uh, to his uh, teachers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but it, the the way we can start sharing uh, this this stuff globally uh, and instantly, you know, so that you 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 can put it out there and then get the the feedback, or or they can uh, clone it and you know modify it themselves to to suit you know their needs and purposes. Uh, it's just it, it's mind boggling. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be waiting. I'm hoping that you have it on the roadmap to get this into the uh, Google Apps Marketplace so I can add it domain-wide to educate to my whole school in one All right. shot. Yeah. That would be... I'll have to look at that. And then it would be a single sign-on so I can just, you know, students just click more and then they click slide speech and they're in. Yeah, um, sweet. I, I think that would be a very good integration and one that I would use <laughs> uh, if you're looking for growth. <clears throat> yep. Um, no, it's an awesome product. I am happy to be. Uh, it's one I'm going to be using. It's, I, I certainly like it. My wife emailed me the other day. Says I need to do a presentation. He wants me to videotape it. You know, I originally said uh, to go here and do a uh, a screencast, but I'm wondering if this might even be easier for her. So the the goal is to make it as simple as typing and. Uh, uh, there are other, you know, websites that uh, have been very successful with this uh, approach. Uh, you might have seen Extra Normal. That's X T R A N O R M A L, uh, which lets you actually make an entire animated cartoon uh, with just typed and and text to speech generated voices. I think I've I have think I have heard of that one. Yep. So, but you see that, that and that might be you know very appropriate for some educational applications, but you know it's it's hard to teach more you know higher education and uh, you know, yeah, no. physics or something like that with a, a cartoon. Yeah, we, we spend so much time building these presentations. It's really nice to be able to you know. And the biggest thing about it, especially the web-based ones, is to add speech to it. And not everybody is comfortable talking. And, you know, sometimes they do need that scripted um, thing that's beyond what's written. And that's yeah. one of the things I like. It, you didn't put out something that just reads what's on the, uh, the slide. presentation. No, is, the, yeah, the, the oh, important yeah. part of it is to get more or, or uh, actually just to, to have a sentence you don't want to write very much actually that directs your attention to the appropriate part of the, the slide and then uh, you don't want to put too much on these slides either you know so that the thing can actually move very quickly uh, and this I think is a real positive you know what what did Salman Khan discover when you know he started making those those YouTube videos uh, for his niece was that you know uh, YouTube had a 10 minute limit and that was probably just a really good thing that none of his his tutorial videos ever got to be kind of too long yeah uh, yeah so these we keep these things short sweet to the point and then get right back into that interactivity so that the student stays engaged and they aren't just you know being forced to well see the nice thing about slides as opposed to video is that you can just flick through the slides until you see something that you want to hear more about and then you can stop and play that or if you're doing something step by step have you ever had this experience you're using a video an instructional video and you know they just explained something and then they moved on and then you go oh I want to back up and hear that one step again but then you rewind and then you're like two minutes before you know the the, the, the one step that you needed and so you kinda have to listen to with side speech, each slide is is one step, and so it's really easy to to back up and you know have it stop right there, so you can repeat that one slide 
and uh, we've we've figured out you can hybridize. You know, you put slide speech together with a Google form, and the Google form contains each of the steps of the checklist. And so then you watch this slide speech presentation, so you know what the steps are, and then oh, you know, maybe you put the the checklist on your iPad while you're working through you know doing you know creating your Google site or whatever on your your desktop or your laptop uh, it's really a very simple idea but you know I haven't seen anybody else kind of get to that but no. you know we've got multiple devices so why not you know uh, and uh, the, the simplicity of it is um, you, you when you're you're building the instruction you just take a screenshot 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 and then, um, or, or, or do, uh, if you're on Windows, there's a snip tool, which lets you drag out a rectangle that's just, you know, some portion of the, the screen. And then uh, the, the current versions of PowerPoint have a thing called import photo album. And with that, you just suck all of those images all in one go into a PowerPoint presentation, and it automatically scales all the pictures up to their, you know, till they fit as well as possible into a slide you know so it, it's automatically doing all those kind of zooms that you'd want it to do if you if you've snipped a small piece of the screen it, it becomes bigger yep. uh, and then all you got to do is slide by slide type in a sentence or two to say what it is you know you needed people to notice about that hit go so it, it's you know in into the slide speech system and then add an interactivity at the end and you're done that the, the I, I keep track with a stopwatch how much time it takes me to make these presentations and then how long they play for so there's a sort of an input output ratio and then I compare this with the stuff that's been published about you know building the massively open online courses uh, Duke University did a really good thorough study where they they also were, were tracking everybody's time and and the Duke ratio is for video uh, these video based courses is about 55 to 1 and with slide speech, I'm closer to 20, 20 to one, and I've had it as low as uh, ten to one. Oh my goodness, um, Moodle. We have Moodle. I can't yep. believe how much of a time suck that is. Yep. And I mean, I'm looking at slide speech. I the first thing you're talking about, the you know the how-to ones. Um, I teach a graphics class, and one of the, I guess one of my assignments is um, this like. Create this fire effect in, of text. Yeah, and there's a lot of little steps to that. And I yeah. found some good videos on how to do it, but it is exactly like what you explained. It's this, you know, play, pause, rewind, try and hit the right spot. You still want that interactivity, and you but want the controlled. voiceover. Yeah. yeah. So this is going to be really good. I mean, from you know, I, I've been wanting to say the word sped. Special ed department, uh, right on up through to high end classes for displaying information. You know, graduate level classes. Yep. You're taking your doctorate, am I correct? Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming your professors have never seen a slide speech slide. Uh, getting the whole university to to come up to speed on this thing is is going to be uh, an education. Uh, but my advisors, they followed along right from the, the very beginning, helping me to uh, refine the system. So they're, they're, they're pretty familiar with how it works now. Yeah, see, it was funny because I know when I was taking my master's class, I loved being on the edge and trying all new, new things. So yeah. a couple of them never saw a Prezi, and that was the first one I showed them. You know, a few yeah, other little yeah. ones, it's like, oh, you can do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've been doing a little bit of that. I think I think one of my advisors bought his first smartphone as a result of slide speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been uh, chatting here for just under an hour. Um, it's probably you know I probably had it going for about five ten minutes beforehand while we we're trying to get the audio going well. Um, I wanted to we have uh, another. Google, um, oh good, my goodness, it's the end of the day for me, I guess, too. It's the beginning of the day for you, end of the day for me. Um, we have another podcast scheduled 
on using Google Apps as a learning management system. Um, that's happening May 2nd. And I think we're looking for people to join us. Um, and I transitioned way too fast for that one. Is there anything else you want to, closing things about slide speech, anything else you want to say? Just kind of wrap Just up. People get out and give it a try. Uh, it, it is slidespeech.com, and that's speech with two E's. Uh, and uh, then once you land on our homepage, you'll see there's links all across the bottom for the uh, uh, apps, uh, you know, getting you right into the iTunes store, uh, the Google Play market, uh, the Windows uh, phone market. Uh, whatever your mobile device is, be sure to download the, the app and then make a presentation and then uh, if it's uh, if you don't mark it private, it'll automatically show up in the in the list of, of presentations uh, that you can view from the from the app, and so then you can click on it and play on it. And then you know, it's never I've really never understood this about Wikipedia. You know how it doesn't have any any social media kind of connections. There's no share button for a Wikipedia article. So yeah. what is uh, we, with we, that? Yeah, what is with that? So it's uh, uh, slide speech. Uh, we put share uh, right on the bottom of the screen. You know, so it's, it's kind of grayed out, so you, it doesn't distract you too much. But you can click on that, and you can automatically, you know, tweet uh, the link for a presentation you're watching to anybody, or or, or add it to your Facebook page, or or generate a QR code. So you do have this this nice capability too of, of creating uh, you know explanation materials that somebody could just scan a QR code and the, their phone would start talking to them about whatever it is. Uh, it's a neat a neat thing, and then we're going to add in the the edit button for for those you know, just make it really literally just like Wikipedia, uh, where you know on any article you could potentially change the the text you're you're seeing. On any presentation, you'd be able to click edit and change the voiceover for the what you're hearing, uh, and uh, and we think that, and then also the the links and the interactivity uh, aspects of it as well. So people would be able to to copy and reuse these uh, these little units, uh, trying to to achieve that sort of holy grail of of you know SCORM and reusable you know learning materials. Uh, which I don't think anybody uh, that I know has has really kind of fallen in love with because they're you you sort of never know what you're going to get and they're all you know in different formats. Is that do you, do you do you encourage people to use learning objects at all yet? Um, not I really. Think, yeah. Like I said, my big thing has been the collaboration, so I'm really yep. keen on that one. I was going to yep. ask. Are, right now, it's all or nothing. You click edit, anybody has edit rights to. Um, are you looking to be able to close it down? Because, I mean, there's things like I'd love my whole class to be able to create one of these. And yep. I actually have an have a assignment one that um, uh, that someone just recently did that kind of fits right in line with this. But I'd like the entire class to be able to edit this and build one. Yep. But that doesn't necessarily mean I want the public to be able to do that. Sure. Uh, the the way you do that is you uh, you turn on public editable, but you also turn on there's a thing you just click private, and and that's the same as with YouTube is if you're you're publishing a YouTube video you can make it so it never shows up on anybody's search or any list, but if somebody has the link they can watch it. Okay, so it's more like the, also Google Apps is link only is private. Right, right, exactly. Okay. Same, same thing as that. Yep. So, so you you could, and then my recommendation for if you're doing it with a class of people, rather than making them all have their own login, just give the entire class the same account. Okay. So, so then everybody, and so then the my slides choice, which is what normally lists you, you know, your user produced slides, would would call up a list of everybody's class slides. Well, this is an awesome product, and like I said, the other assignment that I was thinking of, I know a teacher had, um, it was students read a story, and they each had their own sentence, and he created QR codes, and he pasted them up all along the wall so the parent could walk up and QR, you know, scan the QR code of their student, and all of a sudden it would start playing their student's, you know, version of this. Sweet. Um, I can oh, see I that. 
yeah, slide speech is right along there because, like I said, you can you can also use it to record voices, um, so you can have either it written and cataloged like you have, yes, or record it with the QR code. So, and now you have like the story, the illustration that goes along with that. So, right, and that voice recording is uh, enabled on on the mobile devices, so you can literally just talk to your mobile phone and provide the voiceover for the slide. Uh, but w one other feature, sorry, is that uh, whenever you produce one of these things and publish it, you get an email uh, with a nice link to the presentation. So uh, you're thinking you want to share something with the parents? Well, the kid does the presentation, and then they just forward that uh, email to the parents, and now they can watch the kids work on, on their uh, mobile or, or desktop PC at home. Yeah, and that can be shut off because I can imagine just a teacher having 20 of those, you know, bombard them with it. <laughs> Both good and bad. <laughs> yes, potentially. So, needs needs some management tools, and, uh, but that's where all of the, the connections with all of the Google Forms and, and things like that uh, start coming in. And, and this is, you know, it's just one piece of the puzzle. But I, I think it's actually a really helpful piece. And and talking about the other pieces on on May second with you uh, is is going to be a lot of fun uh, because we, we we started this uh, Google Plus community for using Google Apps as a lear free learning management system, and, and 450 ed educators from around the world have already signed up. And um, uh, so we are we're getting the collaboration going on a on a global scale around this stuff. Yeah, and. I mean, I don't know if you've looked at the G class folders um, that I co-authored, but that's all around Google Apps workflow and management. So it's a big, it's a big thing for me too. Can't wait to get into it and 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 make some slide speech presentations about it. Good. <laughs> awesome. We're gonna have to do that one. <laughs> um, so again, the learning management podcast that we're, Google Apps is a learning management podcast is going to be happening May 2nd um, at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time USA. Uh, and I'm looking for not only John to join me, but I'm also looking for anybody else who wants to be in the Hangout with me. So I'm calling out to all the listeners. Uh, please send me an email if you are interested in being in that hangout. Uh, we have, oh my goodness, we have a lot here. Just to recap, um, go to slidespeech.com and uh, we have, I also put out a link to you to the uh, Google Apps Learning Management System Google Plus community. Uh, don't Great. forget, there's also a EdListen Learning Management community, which I saw that you used recently. Uh, posting out one of your a really good slide speech on I man I watched it oh yeah let's talk about that for a second because that's another sort of a, a call to action for the community uh, it's about the stack exchange uh, which is the question and answer site where anytime somebody asks a question other people can answer or vote on the answers that have been provided it's a, it's again the stigmergy idea so somebody's gone out and already done some work. Well, let's build on that work. And, uh, and there isn't uh, one of these question and answer sites for uh, for education technology. And uh, I think there actually is demand for one. We just all need to sort of know about it and go and and sign up for it and and put in some questions. They have a a, a base before they'll actually launch the the site. You have to have 40 questions, each of which has 10 upvotes. You know, so kind of 400, you know, responses uh, to to prove that this will be a you know a, an ongoing and sustained uh, resource for people. But it's completely free. So if you just go to the the links that you've provided for the the Stack Exchange um, Education Technology Question Answer Site, uh, the 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 hybrid of uh, a, a site where you can ask questions and get answers and then the answers themselves could potentially be things like slide speech presentations which you know actually you know walk you through step by step how to you know use Google site templates in my class or something like that uh, I think is, is a very powerful one. Oh it's really good. Have you played with moderator? Google moderator? 
I have tried moderator. Uh, I, I, I was uh, I struggling have, with it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Honestly, why. Honestly, I have a feeling it's going to be one of those uh, cut ones, so I wouldn't put yeah. too much effort into it. Yeah, uh, but it does have that same idea where you post out a question and and um, make it, you know, uh, get it get the questions to raise up um, and responses. So it was a really cool uh, concept that you did a very good slide speech on. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and like I said, it's just, I, I can't believe how easy it is to get the information out using this. And yeah, uh, so it's fast. It really is fast. That, that's the, that's the thing. It takes my breath away how fast it is. I, I I make an appointment across town to see a principal at a local school. I send him a slide speech presentation, you know, to watch, you know, when I go to visit with him. But by the time I get in my car, drive across town, he's already watched the presentation 15 minutes ago. I'm going, why did I bother getting out of my chair? <laughs> you know, I I can communicate so much faster and so much more effectively, you know, just by sending a slide speech presentation along. Yeah. And you could use them for stuff like birthday cards and things like that too. It's it, it's yeah. You know, I don't know. It's 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 going to be fun. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, I mean, I think we could be talking about this thing. It's more fun to talk about. It's awesome to create. And we're sitting here talking about the resources. And it, like I said, it it gets that. It's one of those tools that you get in, you start using, and all of a sudden, your the ideas flowing and the energy is up. Yep. It's just it perpetuates Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it perpetuates more usage of it. So Okay, so um I with that I'm gonna kinda finish up the show and say thank you very much for listening to the Ed Listen podcast with your host Bjorn Barrett. You can follow the podcast and contribute by going to www.edlisten.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Plus. Uh, Google+, Plus is definitely the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I do have a voicemail number. It's 802-772-0855. I think it only works in the U.S., though. Uh, so, again, thank you for listening, and never stop learning. Sweet. I like that sign off. <laughs> stop. File. Save. Okay. And this is 22. Sorry. This is a big thing about, you know, I have like three things going on at once, but I want to make sure it does get saved. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. No, so it was funny because as I was doing my uh, presentation, the slide speech presentation, it's actually disappeared from my uh, slide speech account. Huh. So uh, I, do you remember what you titled it? Yeah, no, I can find it. I have the link. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I've posted out the link. It's actually on the uh, Ed Listen community. Oh, it is. All right, cool. <laughs> but it's no longer in my my slides when I log into Slide Speech. Huh? Did you did you maybe did you have two accounts or something like that? That's I've never heard of that. I didn't think so. But it was one of those things where I kind of you know I clicked off, clicked back on. I think I just happened to click off the the one slide my slide slam thing. six slides. This is good. Yeah, that was the the slide speech one that I did, and I was gonna go yeah. and I was gonna go in. I was gonna actually follow along as I'm talking to you, but it's not in my. I log in anymore. This is a very nice little presentation you did. Thank you. That's well, you're great. Welcome. And is there an interactivity at the end? Ah, oh, you got to add the interactivity. I would then, like to. I All can't. right. Uh, so you want to walk through that? Well, no, I can't. If I click on my slides, it's not visible there. I says it says I have no. You have not created right. any slides right. yet. So look, if 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 have you opened the the presentation in your browser right now? I mean, is it, it slide speech slash s j h five all that kind of stuff? Well, here I can get to it. By the way, we're yeah. still recording. We're still recording live. So that's fine. This this is actually a useful thing for people to know. <laughs> Um, okay, Ed, listen. Yeah, because I wanted to go back in and use it, and it's like, no, wait. <laughs> All right, so, so here's what you type. So after slidespeech.com, okay. type edit.html question mark slash edit.html dot dot question mark 
code equals, and then your presentation was J, H, 5, Y, 4, U, and F. And then you'll notice the last two characters are E, N. Yep. And the, the E, N is the language code. So when you get the same presentation translated and it's in German, those letters will be D, E. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So anyway, as soon as you hit enter with slidespeech.com slash edit.html question mark code equals and then the code number for oh, your presentation, <laughs> you're back into the editor. Okay, so now back in the editor, you, you have the tabs, metadata, slides, and interactivity. Yep. Okay, so the first one I want you to go to is metadata because on metadata, you can click public. Uh, I have private presentation, I have public editing. Yeah, that's the one. So you want and me to do just, public editing? Yeah, because yeah, then I can edit with you. So now, and then hit the update button over on the left-hand side, the orange. I have there are answers without text in the interactive interactivity part of the presentation. Ah, all right. Well, go to your interactivity tab. Maybe this is where things got fouled up. This is. I mean, I was playing with this, and that's when it. It disappeared, so... Okay, let, let's go back to the interactivity tab, and you just need to fill in each of the questions and responses there. Yeah, I was going to... Actually, I was just going to put it some, you know, uh, go to links. Yeah, exactly. That's fine, yeah. Uh, the, the, I have a sort of boilerplate that I say, to learn more, uh, click on the links below. Each opens in a new tab. Okay, to learn... Links. But again, if, if you just... You know, like okay, delete so, everything or something, on, and go back to metadata. I can help you. Oh yeah, well I I did, but I wouldn't wouldn't let me update until I fin fix this part. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So to learn more, click the links below. Yeah. And if I put the first one is slide speech. Yep. Now. All right. Here's the secret. Secret. You, you see, there's a a blue box in the lower right hand corner that says add external link. Yes. All right. Now you just drag that into the workspace. Yes. And, I, and now it's giving you an input box where you can type http colon slash slash slidespeech.com. Yep. And I okay. click apply. And I, I played with that and then... And now here's the next out. secret is that you have to drag from the answer number to that box. So it's, it's like you're picking up the number one and putting oh. it and that makes the connection. Okay. All right. So, and so that's... Then you can do another plus to add another answer and do that same process again for other links up to maybe, you know, you don't want to have more than maybe six answers to a question. Uh, but those links can also be to other slide speech presentations. Yeah, and uh, you have, Okay, now I... This is... This looks cool, no less. Isn't that fun? And this is just like, you know, prototype version one. You can imagine what it's going to be like when that tree of, of choices can be something that you zoom out on just like you do on a Prezi, you know, and, and suddenly you'll be able to see the whole flow of personalized instruction through a whole bunch of different slide speech units. It, it, do you know Khan Academy's knowledge map? You know, where he starts with addition at the top and, you know, there's a kind of a tree of, of nodes all the way down to advanced calculus? Uh, I think I've heard of it, but I have not got to play with it yet. Okay. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a dashboard, too, which is really a neat idea, is that essentially what he does is this is, you know, I'm going to make a map of the, the domain of knowledge of mathematics. And then each of the cities, you know, addition, multiplication, you know, algebra, whatever, has a, has a line, you know, connecting it. So it's, it's like a map. And in fact, they use exactly the same, you know, Google, you know, mapping technology, you know, the, the one that you, you use, mm -hmm. you know, where you there's street view and all that kind of stuff, except for he's made this universe of mathematics that you can zoom around in. And, and then it keeps track of which of those nodes the student has actually visited so that they get a progress, a visual progress report of where they are in the space of learning mathematics and, 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 and topics that they have yet to explore. And so you can begin to see the gamification aspect of this. You know, it's just like that game Civilization, you know, where you start 
and you know some you found Rome and then eventually you go and explore the whole planet well knowledge can be sort of visualized in the same way and with slide speech what we can do is make that dynamic so each of the presentations that people make and the linkages that are made between them can dynamically be mapped so if you've, you've seen these famous sort of they call them the peacock chart of the internet where you know there's just kind of a bush of stuff well with slide speech or you know to mirror what what Khan has done for mathematics you could take any topic that people have made presentations about and and by visualizing all these interconnections between them you could see how much there is to learn and what the the best pathways are for you to to progress through that that body of knowledge and literally it looks exactly like the the ant trails that um, in this world of, uh, of studying uh, you know biology and stigmergy is you figure out how to get to the food you had you know here I am uh, I'm starting as a learner uh, and I want to become a medical student and, and, a, and a doctor well you can you can start to, to see the whole pathway and 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 you know some of the, the the twists and turns and you know where you might be able to specialize and and it all becomes something that you can visually see and, and the power of that to, to to have that meta understanding of your own you know learning mm -hmm. potentials uh, I'm, I'm just so excited to, to to just be able to imagine it and to have here the technology from which that kind of thing could be built uh. and then it's amazing and I think I've added it so it's editable still not showing up in my my slides but okay so I'm gonna refresh on my side and I'm seeing your slide and on the very first slide you say welcome to this slide speech slam brought to you by edlisten.com and I'm gonna do exactly what you said when Ed listen is was all one word mm -hmm. it didn't sound as good as if you put a space in between and so I'm putting a space between slide and speech <laughs> and now I'm gonna hit the update key and it says presentation updated and now if you could go to that same slide and refresh or just replay the presentation yep I see the space yep and uh, you've got the two orange buttons at the bottom one is a double headed arrow that refreshes the audio for you and the single play button just plays it so all you have to do is hit that play button and you'll hear how that one slides audio comes out I'll see how it sounds Welcome to slide speech slam brought to you by edlisten.com <laughs> you know we should have done that in the official one Okay, yeah, this is well, gonna, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Doing out in the podcast anyway. <laughs> <laughs> start start getting some of the computer generated audio as as part of your. Uh, uh, well, you know what you can do if, well, if you've got a, a a signature sign off for the end of your show, you you could queue up you know a, a slide speech slide with you know whatever it is you want to have said and just hit the go button. <laughs> and it's gonna it's be your voice. Because, because uh, let me let me take you through the the intonation, voices, gestures, and voiceover tabs of the editor. Oh, hold uh, on one second. I want to get something going first. Okay. Uh, I I did this and then I didn't hit update. Yeah. Yeah. You the update, update is for me. Thing. But I had the uh, I'm playing with the interactivity. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Let's back that. All right. Okay. So apply that. That's cool. Oh, there's no way to test the, the sound of the interactivity. Yeah, I put thank you and never stop learning, which is my ending of my podcast into the air. Oh, sweet. Um, as one of the choices that you could pick at the uh, ending interactivity. Yep, yep. Yeah, so unfortunately, yeah, to test the interactivity, you have to actually, um, there's an X all the way up in the right-hand corner of the editor. Mm -hmm. And that... Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, that drops you back into your list of my slides. You could also copy the URL again and just open up a new tab. You can have multiple slide speech tabs going at the same time. And uh, whichever version of the presentation you've just updated will play with slidespeech.com slash s slash the code number. 
Yeah, well, you know what? For the YouTube videos, for the YouTubers, uh, people watching live and people that are watching this via YouTube, I'm going to share my screen because I have it up here and it has the interactiveness. So let's see how this works. I'm going to hit share. Get the slam video. Uh, I'm hoping you can at least see this. Am I correct? Uh, I would have to go to the Hangout? If you're looking at the Hangout, I, I'm pretty sure it's there. I'm not going to worry about it. So yeah. I'm actually going to play this. And let's see how this... This was the one I created. Oh, yeah. No, I'm I'm on the Hangout now. I see it. Yep. Welcome to Slow Speech Slam brought to you by Edmiston.com. Is it automatically going to play the next one? Uh... Now, if I put like extra spaces, will it take an extra space in it? Like a pause, extra pause? All right. Well, uh, let me explain how the pausing and other things work. Because pauses actually wind up being a very important part of a, a audio delivery. Can we get back to the editor? Um. Yep. Okay. And on the bottom, you see, uh, if you scroll down. Okay, actually, I want to do it on the next slide, so I'm going to hit over, hit the slide over. Yep, which is that right and like library arrow office with... had it sounded horrible. So that we definitely okay, want space great. there. Okay. Okay, go on for pauses. Okay, so right above the text, are there the, the, you've got the three choices of of pausing, of speeding up. And, and changing the pitch, yep. which doesn't change the speed. So you just literally click your insertion point at wherever you want the pause, and then choose the pause length, and 1.0s means one full second of pause. Okay. And then you just click on that orange dot, 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 and that, you'll see, puts a, a pause icon into the, the so text. And then it's not that one, it's the double-headed arrow you want to hit, which will refresh the audio and regenerate it with the pause. Yeah, I hit that. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I actually I did hit it. <laughs> okay, so I'm back up here, so... I always just start over. Just hit the, the refresh button, the two-headed arrow. Slow speech will take a presentation created for Microsoft PowerPoint. I will like it. Office in front. So actually, this needs to be... How do I get rid of that? You should be able to highlight it, and then... Um, there we go. There's a clear... Yeah, okay, and then backspace. Yeah, let's just do like an extra point five. That's great. It'll, it'll play eventually. It, you don't have to hit play separately. Presentation created for Microsoft PowerPoint. Library Office Speed Press and using text to speech technology will create a web based presentation that is narrated. You can also record your own voice if you so choose. Nice. Oops. So, if I actually go here and go to voices. Yep. Now there, are any anything that you highlight, so drag across slide speech will take a presentation, uh, so and now click the highlight. woman's voice, yeah, or the German voice, yeah. So uh, now shields, you'll have the combination of a male and female voice on that one slide. Now, see, I was looking at this one, and I could not figure out, like, I'm hitting the button, and they're not coming uh, in. Yeah. Hit refresh. Yeah, and you can tell that it's refreshing, yeah. You can also record your own voice if you so choose. So you can you can imagine you can make a whole kind of dialogue, you know? 
it would be nice if I if I could have changed the demo part to my own voice. But <laughs> yeah, now go to the third tab over gestures. Okay. And here's where you can throw in like little ha ha aha oh hmm you know things that aren't words, but they make the you suddenly go oh, wow you know this is this isn't just a computer voice now it's a computer. Um, yeah, put one right at the beginning of your your playback, and then you'll you'll be able to hear it right away. Or, or throw them all in, you know, so you can hear all the different things it can do. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll do the aham. Uh -huh. So I have to click, and then I'll have to click, do the, click, and uh -huh. then select. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. not a dragon yeah. now. Okay, so this is fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, it is. It's it's a, it's a riot. <laughs> I, and I get to see like the kids spending hours on this one, <laughs> but it's really pedagogical. Oops. I think so too. Yeah, and and. Literally writing something and then having it read to you gives you such a good idea about whether you've structured your sentence well, and especially if you're a, a um, you know English as a second language learner. You know, think of the power of this tool for people to be practicing. How do I say something, and then does it sound right? Or, or if you misspell words, it mispronounces them, so you you know that you've you screwed up. You know, besides the fact that the Word is you know underlined in red. Uh, it it, uh, it doesn't sound right. What's the source button? That's because you can switch right into the HTML and actually. Um, th this is. Uh, I say HTML. I should have said SSML. What actually makes the voice engine work is a thing called speech synthesis markup language. So if you actually want to get down and dirty, you can. You can code the uh, the phonemes that it's it's using to speak with, you know. So if it's not, it literally isn't ever going to pronounce a particular word the way you want. You can, you know, get really low level with the the voice engine. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna and then the voiceover up. tab is where you you put your own voice in. So if you haven't haven't shown that, just flick over to the next tab. Yep. There's the voiceover right here, yep. and I did that on my last slide. Right. My, my tip on that is you, you can do a direct uh, over the web recording if, if you, you're, you're wearing your headset and, and you want to do it that way. I strongly recommend not recording directly into the, the, the slide, but using Audacity first, and, and then you can edit it and then upload what you have um, recorded. So you've got the choice of either one. That's a, either a file upload or a you know record in place. And and I uh, I like the idea of you could talk through your whole slide presentation, and then go and put those things called labels in Audacity to to chop Oops. up your your presentation by slide. Is there an undo? Uh, I think if you just exit, you won't have saved. So yeah, just. I don't have an X. Uh, the, the reason you don't have an X is because you've come in through edit.html. So um, just refresh up there. You know, just, yep. Should bring you back into the unsaved version, right? Yep. Great. So that's nice. Like I said, it's not in my my. So if I go to you know, slice, even, it's not showing up here. <laughs> that's really odd. It, it was in there, and then it just kind of got lost. Yeah. Well, you know what? Just just upload it again. Just just make it again from scratch, and uh, you can always copy and paste over. And just open another tab and and do a, uh, create slides. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry if yeah there will be occasionally these, these little bugs and things that uh, you know, we're still working out, and uh, we do have a feedback form right on the home page for. Yes. Thank you. Alpha version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this is still. Potentially, Very functional. I can, yeah, it's, it, it works. is. It's yeah. amazing what you can do with it. Um, so, you know what? I got to go pick up my uh, daughter and bring her to gymnastics pretty soon. Sweet. And I'm really looking forward to our next conversation and possibly okay, having you back too. on for more because this is good. Your pedagogical approach is awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so and, I want to the the, uh, the the summer courses you're doing sound like they're just exactly in parallel with what this uh, uh, I think her name is Krista Mor Moroder Moroder 
uh, I'm sorry, I'm mangling her name, but she's got this thing called EdTech Challenge in Wisconsin, uh, which again is, you know, everything is, you know, Creative Commons, open source, we're going to share our templates, we're all going to learn how to do the Google Apps together, uh, and uh, we'll talk about that in May. Oh man, I'm going to have to hit your Rolodex up. We're running out of uh, school year for my podcast, I don't know if I'm, I haven't decided if it's going to be uh, going through the summer or not, but. Uh, yeah, I love doing the podcast and connecting with all these people. So, yep, yeah, that's great. And Steve Hargadon is the, the the master of all of that. So, if you, if you ever listen to one of his uh, education 2.0 or um, classroom 2.0, you know, I'm actually uh, I have heard his name and. I was just listening to somebody else who's really big in education, and I'm really just blanking on his name. I had it up today. Um, hold on. It's the art. Ken Robinson. He's my other big favorite one. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I don't think he does a podcast series. <laughs> no, but it's always on the TED Talks, and I was just listening to him. So I'll have to try and find Steve Hargadon and... So, hey, uh, thank you very much. My pleasure. Talk and to you again soon. I'm going to re-end this second part. Like I said, I'd love to keep it going. So thank you, everybody, uh, and never stop learning. Yep. Bye, my Bye good Bye now. Man. Sure.